This is a marble, probably one of the more chaotic pattern mutations in reticulated pythons, and definitely one of my all-time favorites. In this week's video, we're gonna break down how this pattern breaks down the pattern of the reticulated python, what it does in combos, and being that this gene is so variable, I'm even gonna show you a bunch of different examples of what this can do. My name is Garrett Hartle, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. The marble morph is very unique among mutations within reticulated pythons, or any reptiles for that matter, in that it doesn't really strip anything away from the animal that was there before. If you think about most pattern mutations, they're reducing the pattern and removing some element of what's already there. In contrast, this marble mutation takes everything that's already there just the way it was in a wild type and puts it in a blender. It's extremely variable and no two marbles ever look the same. Now in your standard wild type reticulated pattern, you're going to have different segmented, well-defined portions of the pattern, whether it's the silver side flames coming up the side, the golden area that surrounds the black dorsal pattern, maybe those white side rosettes. They all have a defined repeatable space on the animal from head to tail. With the marble mutation, you literally throw all of that out the window. No two marbles ever look alike. The interesting thing about the way that the marble mutation hit the market is that it was bred first overseas in larger numbers and kind of hit the industry all at once. Numbers of people were importing marbles all at the same time. This was also during a time with the reticulated python pattern mutations where the anthrax gene was being heavily developed and a lot of people saw the marble as a very similar genetic trait to the anthrax and so it kind of slipped into a lot of collections underappreciated almost unnoticed as people bred more and more of them we began to see the differences i would even almost say the limitations of that the anthrax mutation had for pattern blending and where the marble really began to shine. Add to that that it's an incomplete dominant trait, meaning I can breed this marble to a totally wild type or any other related bloodline and get half a clutch of marbles, or I could breed two marbles together and get the super form, an even more chaotic version of what's already here, and all of a sudden you have some very compelling reasons to absolutely fall in love. Before we talk about everything you can do with a marble and selective breeding projects, let's take a deep dive into the look of the classic and beautiful marble reticulated python. Starting at the head, what we call a head stamp when we refer to retics, is chopped, reorganized, blended, and put back together. Instead of one clean black stripe from the tip of the snout to the back of the head, the marble has multiple stripes coming from many different directions. As you move beyond the head and into the body pattern, I think what a lot of people recognize in the marble is how the black dorsal pattern, the outlines that typically make that net-like reticulated pattern that these pythons are named for, they see immediately how that's blended up, but there's a lot of things going on here that a lot of people tend to miss. On your typical wild type reticulated python, you have two layers of colors that kind of interlock and compete for space. That would be silver coming up from the belly and gold pattern coming down from the top. But on a marble, the areas where the silver and gold kind of intercept each other are blended back, forth, up, down, and yet they're still somewhat separated by this mid dorsal line where you typically see those white spots that look like porthole windows going down the side of the snake we call side rosettes. The marbles often have a stripe or a linear area or just complete chaotic blotches separating the top half of the snake from the bottom. The actual white portions of side rosettes can literally be blasted out of their placeholder there on the side of the snake as well, making their way into the top and dorsal pattern or all the way down, almost connecting with the belly scales. Speaking of belly scales, where you would typically have a snake that has a yellow belly or a white belly or potentially white or gray belly with yellow side borders, on the marble's belly, even the white and yellow is completely interchanged almost looking like that white and yellow corn on the cob, a kernel here, a kernel there, mixed all throughout. Now on reticulated pythons, the area on the neck pattern tends to be like thinner, say 
maybe more refined. And then as you get to the mid portion of the body, it gets really set in, very bold, very distinct. And then towards the tail, you have a little bit of like a reduction of certain elements of the pattern. The marble really makes that stand out. And in some cases, the animal can look like three entirely different snakes. But if we look at Melissa here is the name of this marble, on her tail pattern, you can actually see where the black lines that outline her tail pattern have been stretched two and three times as wide, shifted back and forth, and you almost have the actual tail pattern of the snake trying to break out back past that marble pattern. This isn't the only expression that this marble mutation has. In fact, it can look any number of ways, especially as you add it into the different kind of looks or bloodlines of reticulated pythons you have. Now, while Melissa here is a great example of that classic marbling that you expect to see out of this mutation, this can take so many other forms as well. For example, if you're working with a bloodline with like thin and dainty, dainty lines, the marble as it mixes up could completely stripe that animal out. In other cases where you have bold black contrast, you may get all kinds of completely randomized and unexpected pattern by using the marble mutation. This variability in the marble not only makes it fun to like pick out and buy marbles for yourself, but as a breeder, there's nothing more exciting than having no clue what you're gonna get inside of those eggs, except oddly enough that you know which eggs are going to contain marbles before they even hatch. A little known fact about the marble gene that most people almost don't believe in is that when you candle an egg, when it's incubating, the eggs containing marbles will glow it's like a Hulk green color instead of your standard peachy pink. So you can literally count your marbles before they hatch. That's so bad. You're welcome. Now that we know what the marble does as a base mutation, let's take a look at what it can do when introduced into some other elements. One of the nicest things about breeding marbles from a selective breeding standpoint is it's not overpowering. An example of something that's really overpowering would be like a golden child. Basically a patternless animal, almost anything that you add it to is going to completely eat up the look of those other mutations and come out more or less looking like a golden child. Not so with marble. Because of the way that that marble leaves the effects of other pattern mutations in there, it kind of fights through whatever it's given, blending it up in different ways. It makes for a really interesting mutation to add into those combos. Some of the pattern combinations that actually clean up pattern are the ones that look best in marble. Where I would think that something very chaotic would play well into the chaotic look of the marble, things like tiger that really smooth and clean up the patterns are some of the ones that ended up looking the absolute best as pattern combinations. Even with a mutation like Motley that pulls everything up to the top, the influence of the marble is still clearly visible in what's going on with the animals. This has a lot of promise for future combos that are just waiting to be seen. Now probably an even more obvious thing would be to breed this pattern mutation into other color mutations and see the combination there. So you get all the variability of that marble in a plethora of different colors, platinum, sunfire. And last but not least, breeding two marbles together actually comes up with another distinct variation of the look, which would be the super marble, an animal that's as chaotic as can be and also would produce all marbles when bred to anything else. Now kind of because of the, the weird way that this particular mutation entered the Superdorf, well really retic breeding scene, while it's been around for quite a while, very, very little has been done with it in terms of figuring out its full potential when combined with other morphs, leaving for a very bright future indeed for the marble mutation in reticulated pythons. Speaking of a bright future, thank you to all of these patrons who give us a brighter future by supporting all of our efforts here at Reach Out Reptiles. If you guys have been watching these videos and appreciate, consider supporting as well. Thanks a lot. We'll catch you next time.